How you doing, Coach? Hey, good morning, Gary. Like I said, you're still playing. And uh, an interesting note, too, I want you to comment on this. There's been so much talk about the seedings, but this is the first time, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, that all 16 seeds advanced to the Super Regionals, which is kind of interesting to me. I know. I think you're right about that. It, uh, the NCAA softball tweeted, um, you know, for the first time in history, all seeds held, which is pretty amazing, uh, to tell you the truth. Before we get to Florida, let's talk about what you just went through. Uh, you knew it was going to be a challenge. Minnesota's a great club. Um, you knew that they were kind of going to be the – the team that everybody kind of adopted. There was a lot of focus on this regional, a lot of national interest, and you had two of the most incredible softball games I think I've ever seen. And you've played some great ones there, 34 straight regional wins. But to win, you know, if I'd have told you you were going to play 16 innings against that club, score two runs, and win both games, you'd have probably said, Gary, you're crazy. But but you did that. Uh, you know, as offensively as good as they've been for your pitching staff to do what it did with Osorio and Little John uh, against that team, I'm still amazed. i got to be honest with you. Oh, you're right. Everything that you said was absolutely incredible. I mean, their kid, um, I don't know if I've ever seen a better changeup. And, you know, we practiced for it. We um, tried to lay off it. We tried to hit it. I mean, it's just, you know, and Chandler Dare had one of the best at-bats. Um, I think we had two on, and she was up, and she's hitting line drives down the first baseline. And, and um, you know, when you when you got a kid that throws a really good changeup, you can't be like overly excited. You gotta, you gotta calm yourself down a little bit because if you're overly excited and overly aggressive, she's just that's playing into her game. And um, she was battling, and I really thought she was gonna get a hit there. And um, she threw, a, a, and she could place it too. She could throw it in the dirt, or she could throw it for a strike. But this one, she threw like a foot outside and bounced it. And you know, Chandler swung and missed. And it was like. You know, she had total control over the pitch, which usually doesn't happen. You know, you either throw it for a strike or you throw it in the dirt. Right. Usually, you can't do both. So, just she's a she's a great pitcher, and and um, you know, for us to win one and nothing twice, just to, it was. I told the team afterwards it might be the best regional championship we've ever had. You know, and it was definitely the toughest pitcher we've ever faced here. Yeah, I told some people in the press box Saturday, Grunewagen, you could swing twice at that thing, that changeup. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> Without one. a doubt. I think some of us did. <laughs> you know, Sunday, um, and I know you were prepared to, to go to a third game Monday if you had to, but having had that experience of playing nine innings on Saturday and winning on a walk-off walk, uh, you weren't going to waste any time. When you got that opportunity in the first inning, and it, and it was the only run, I mean – not to pat you on the back, you don't need it, but and you got to give Dare credit for the way she ran the bases. But the minute that ball came off Runyon's bat, you were in go mode, and uh, it oh, was yeah. play at the plate. But you knew, hey, this may be our only crack to, to get a run. Talk about that sequence of, of sending Dare all the way from first. Well, when I watched the replay like four times, and <laughs> to tell you the truth, I didn't realize that the center fielder had cut it off. Yeah, I thought it hit the wall. No, she did, and. It and um she made a great play on it, but then what was the key for us was the relay was a little weird, and then the, the shortstop didn't catch it in a position to catch it and throw it right away. She caught it with her with her body totally facing the outfielder, which means she had to turn and then get into the throwing position, and that was what made Chandler safe. Just that little bit of a half turn that she didn't do, that caused her to be safe. and. Um, it just, you know, I've done that before, and she was out. Sometimes she's safe, but at that, at that, uh, you know, it's the first inning. You got to take a chance. You know, make them make a play. Yeah. Put a little pressure on them and see if they can do it. And that turned out to be the ball game. Now you move yep. on. I think facing Grona Wagon is a good preparation because you're going to go, I guess, from the frying pan into the fire. I mean, you're going to go down to Gainesville, and they've got three pitchers who I think are are number ones on on about any staff. Um, Good news is you got a great pitching staff yourself. Are you anticipating similar type games? I know runs will be at a premium. Uh, you won two oh, out of three so. down there last year. Just kind of handicap this series for me. I think so because, um, you know, they have four pitchers, two lefties, two righties. You, you know more. Uh, Acasio was one of the stars last year. Uh, Gurley is the lefty with the nasty changeup. 
and then Barnhill is the one that's kind of emerged oh, this yeah. year as their number one. She's a um, a righty that throws 66 to 70 miles an hour, mainly rise balls, um, not much off speed. But um, we talked to uh, Charlotte Morgan this morning, who was our uh, former uh, three-time All-American, and she was she's the pitching coach at Oklahoma State who just got done playing them. So she told us a couple of things about, you know, what they saw. And um, I think it's going to be more of the same because Oklahoma State beat them one to nothing. And then uh, that forced the if necessary game. Mm-hmm. And then they came back and um, I think their pitching was out of gas. Um, and Florida beat them five to nothing in the championship. So they did beat them the first game. And really all they needed was the one run. And they had two lefties get hits. Um, she got the second on a pass ball wild pitch, and then the next kid got a, a double up the, up the middle. So and that was it. So it was very similar to our games uh, with Minnesota. So I, I think it could be more the same. And one thing that I was really proud of, we didn't commit an error all weekend. And, you know, when the games are one to nothing, uh, you really can't afford to make an error. You sit here today getting ready for this trip, and, you know, there, there's there been a lot of gnashing of teeth this year about the, about the team and, and the season. And, I would always tell people, I would say, just, just hold on, you know, all everything's still in front and, you know, no guarantees. You got to go to Florida, but to, to still be playing at this point when a lot of people had written you off, I know, <laughs> I know you're probably going to give me the political answer, but, uh, but it's, it, it's got to feel good to you personally, uh, to have had a year where you had to win on Sunday against Auburn, to avoid your first ever losing record in the SEC. You took that momentum. You had a good showing in the SEC tournament. You win a tough regional and, and you're still here. Uh, I mean, you know, it's got to be some satisfaction in that. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was really proud of the team because, you know, they could have folded their tents uh, when Demi got hurt, when Maddie got her concussion, when Maris got her concussion. She was leading the team hitting and had an 18-game hitting streak and then, you know, missed 11 days. But, um, you know, and another thing about it was Demi was our leading hitter on the regional. You know, she hadn't seen a, a pitch in five she's, weeks. She's phenomenal. I, I'm yeah, yeah, I'm amazed. And that's how much, you know, she means to the team. So I just think it's too much um, – just immediate um, satisfaction nowadays. It's just um, fans are too almost um, they want it too quick, and there's not much patience involved with anybody. And um, you know it's unfortunate because our kids worked really really hard this year, and and now in their position to go to their fourth straight World Series. So, and it's a hard road for sure. But um, we beat a really good team in Minnesota, and now we got to go down and beat a really good team in Florida. Finally, because I know you got to get going, uh, the the Southeastern Conference, we know what it's become in softball. All 13 teams made it into regionals. You've got eight still standing. You've got two SEC versus SEC Super Regionals. I mean, gosh, dog. I mean, like you said, finishing fifth in this conference is no, you know, that, there's no, there's no crime in that. I mean, the league is held up like we knew it would. Now the only question is how many teams will make it to Oklahoma City. But, uh, you know, what a conference, what a season. I, and, and there's eight, right? Yeah, eight, eight, eight still left, and, and, and four head, you know, head-to-head. Yeah. A&M, Tennessee, so you, and Florida. Half, half of all the Super Regional teams are SEC teams. And, you know, Ole Miss finished eighth, and they're playing UCLA at UCLA. Uh, so it, it, it was a crazy year, and it's just like every other sport in the SEC. And you know it. You've been here forever. and It's just getting comp- more competitive in, the, in our sport. And – you know, people are spending the money, they're building the facilities, and they're getting the athletes, and that's just what happens with um, really good competition. And, and then you add in the, the fan bases and the media attention, and it just becomes this, um, you know, really really competitive monster, and that's what SEC softball has become. One final thing, and uh, you mentioned Demi. She's back and hadn't missed a beat. I couldn't believe the job she did defensively, too. I mean, it's unbelievable. But – um you always want to be playing your best at the right time. Early in the year, this team was clicking. But right now, what you've been through the last couple of weeks, I mean, if Florida's good enough to beat you, you tip your hat and you, and you, and you go home. I get that. But you got to feel great about your team right now as far as the way they've come together. And you got to be thinking, hey, man, I'm taking as good a team as I could expect to take down to Gainesville right now. Oh, absolutely. And I think the pitchers, too. You know, Soria was awesome, but Sydney. Little John was Terrific. huge, and you know there's no way that I could have pitched Lexi on Sunday after she threw 180 pitches on Saturday. 
her, her, she wouldn't have been 60% of no what, way. you know, she normally is. And, uh, for Cindy to come in and do what she did and then, um, give the ball over to Osorio for the last five outs. That was, that was the key to the weekend. And even Maddie Moore given, you know, given us two and two thirds on Friday night, that was two innings that Sydney didn't have to pitch. So, uh, all the way around the pitchers did a great job and, you know, the team defense was awesome. And then the last thing in postseason softball is what you need is a key hit. And, and we got the key hit. Hopefully we get a couple more key hits beginning on Thursday. Thank you so much for your yeah. time coaching and good luck in Gainesville.